John, thank you for being with us uh, this morning. Thank you for your lecture yesterday on holiness. So we're joined this morning with Jay Greener, a, a local pastor at Church of the Redeemer, Anglican Fellowship. Uh, and just to, to continue the conversation, to continue a conversation from the lecture yesterday. So let's just start um, by talking a little bit more about uh, holiness and its relationship to identity, ethics, and uh, pastoral care. So um, why don't, I, Jay, you had some, uh, some thoughts and responses to lecture in terms of defining holiness, your own personal journey. Well, why don't you just get going? Yeah, yeah, and I really appreciate, John, your, uh, what, what you've brought for us. And you know, I've, I've kind of walked a number of different Christian roads, and one of those when I was young, uh, where I grew up, was, was um, a tradition that would have not used the word holiness, but was very uh, aware of external measures of piety. Yes. Um, and I think that for us is what we understood to be holiness. Yes. And it seems like what you're talking about is not that at all. Mm, something I hope very not. different. Something uh, that relates to character. Somewhere yes. Somewhere that relates uh, yes. to development from the inside out through the Holy Spirit rather than something outward. Yes. That, that's supposed to work into us. Yes. And I think that's a really important um, transition for us to understand. Yes, for so many of the strands, whether you talk about the classical holiness movement or the Keswick movement mm -hmm. or other groups, uh, holiness came to be measured by externals mm -hmm. because it's hard to measure self-giving, self-denying love. It's mm -hmm. hard to measure integrity. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to measure hemlines or length of hair, or number of buttons. And, uh, and so that happens again and again, and it misses the whole point of what I think the Bible is talking about. I think one of the things that has uh, benefited us in the current situation, and Jeffrey and I were talking about this a little bit on the way over, is the new recognition of the importance of the Trinity, that in the Trinity there is this self-giving love relationship and that this is really what God wants to share with us and what he longs to see us sharing with one another. And I think that understanding, if we can incorporate it more into the practicalities of life, is, is very helpful in undergirding this, this I believe, proper understanding of what the holy life is about. I think in, in, the, in the generation that I'm, I'm a part of and, and after that, we, we pushed the pendulum the other direction yes. to where there were then no externals yes. to be measured. Yes. There was no outward uh, yes. sort of uh, manifestation of whatever the holy or ethical life yes. might be. It was it was purely a personal relationship yes. between myself and God or myself and myself. <laughs> and, and, and don't talk to me about anything else that might you know, limit that or, or some kind of standard that I'm, that I'm supposed to keep. And so it seems like we've gone really too far the other direction in terms of what our ethical life is to be. Yes, yes. I think, I think again, I think you're exactly right that it is... Uh, I, I have seen this in my students across the years. Uh, oftentimes they have been, uh, at least from their perspective, injured by those kinds of overemphases upon externals. And so out of that injury, they're reacting and uh, throwing out anything remotely associated with the idea of being unique for God. Uh, no, no, we're, we're going to m meld into the culture and we're going to change the culture simply by being part of it. And I think the message of history is that didn't happen. You've got to be in the culture, no question about it, but you can't be of the culture if you're going to transform it. And uh, so, so I think that the challenge is how does my relationship with God affect every part of my life, internal and external? Uh, what does it mean to not look like, not be the world? 
no easy answers there, but the challenge is before us. Yeah. I think that word holiness, too, is a word we, we stumble over. Yes. Um, it's freighted yes. in, in so many ways. Yes. Um, yes. How do, you, how do you help people um, to kind of get a handle on that? Well, you're, you're certainly right that in too many cases, uh, holiness has come to be equated with sinless perfection, that somehow I can get to a place where I cannot sin, and that certainly is not biblical in any degree. And so, again, I think many people have then gone to the opposite extreme, what I tried to do is, is what I did in the lecture, is, is to say what we're talking about is a life that mimics God's. So it's not really about the language or terminology of holiness as much as it is about the call to live God's life, and God's life is holy by definition so that and again uh, what I was trying to do in the lecture is to say uh, uh, primarily the mark of God's life in us is how we treat one another that it is in that ethical dimension and so uh, again to try to say to people this is this is not about a kind of a cultic uh, set of requirements or prescriptions, it's about a way of incorporating the life of God into my life. Jay, you um, were emphasizing, when you were listening to this sermon, you were emphasizing how, how significant identity implications are um, in, one, in John's mm -hmm. idea of holiness. Mm -hmm. Can you, just in your years of pastoral experience, talk about some ways that you've seen identity misapplied and how that influences a certain Christian identity and, and how you see the implications for the kinds of things John's talking about in terms of uh, not only right self-understanding but even then um, pastoral cultivation of that identity. I, I, one of the areas I think we struggle in this is uh, with the, the prevalence of individualism. Yes. yes. That we only self-relate rather than understanding that we're part of a community. And that, that, that starts really with just our understanding of, of being human, yes. being those who bear the image of God, and how we relate to others who are human, relate to the creation, but then more specifically in the body of Christ. Um, and we've, we've sort of cultivated that in the church, an idea that you are the star of your show. You, you know, you're gonna star in the movie of your own life. And there is an individual notion of faith, certainly, but it, it's, it's, it's lived out in relationship. Yes, yes. And so this is one of the things I think we really, we, we've created it, we struggle with it. Um, it's something we need to address and to um, uh, fix, <laughs> is that, that sense that we're just, we're just on our own, we're just yes. on our own path, that we're, we're all these individuals. That's why I, I prefer the word person rather than individual because it, it raises, uh, at least the bar in terms of how we, we, we think about ourselves in, in relationship to others. And, and um, for instance, I'll give you a, a, an example. For me, this, this is what makes worship, that is properly God-oriented mm -hmm. worship, mm -hmm. the, really the foundation of the communal life of, of believers. Uh, worship yes. isn't a, a program among other programs in the church. It's, it's a foundational place where we discover and continue to learn who God is, yes. who we are in relationship to God, and, and in relationship to one another through through word and through whatever sacraments there might be in your in your own tradition. But that that's the heart of our self understanding uh, before God and before one another. And it's and and, and we need some real uh, we need some change in that in many of our yes. settings. Yes. And I think the the uh, somewhat classic evangelical understanding of salvation plays right into this. If my salvation is a new position in God, a new forensic standing in God, then it really doesn't matter how I relate to you. I'm, I'm in this position. 
But if we understand that, in fact, it's a new relationship with God, which then is impossible without relationship with you, that changes everything. Yeah. And uh, I, think, I think that understanding of, uh, as, as I mentioned in the uh, lecture, a walk, a walk with him in relationship and thus a walk with one another. Yeah. Uh, uh, as, I, as I said uh, in our earlier conversation, I've always loved John Wesley's comment, there is no holiness except social holiness. Mm -hmm. That is, the holy life can only be lived in relation to other people. Mm -hmm. And my comment across the years has been, if I can live in a closet, I'll be the holiest guy you ever saw. <laughs> it's just having to live with people that makes it a problem. And so I, I think you're exactly right that, that this need for understanding ourselves as inseparable from one another in community is, is absolutely vital. Let me push you again on the pastoral point, Jay. Um, there's the obvious point that we address this issue through uh, the teaching and preaching of the mm -hmm. Word of God um, implicitly. How do we practice this individualistic notion of holiness? How do we structure our churches in such a way that we're really cultivating the mentality that holiness is not doing certain things or is a certain esoteric relationship to God? And, and moving forward, mm -hmm. how do we, um, how do we, order church life, and I think you were suggesting some of this already with worship, but how do we order church life in a way yeah. that gets to John's ethical, corporate, social notion uh, of holiness before God and others? Well, it's, it's just my own um, very biased uh, perspective, but I think we've, um, you, you know, we, we've, we've, we've capitulated in some ways to notions of, of marketing as a way to organize uh, churches. And, uh, you know, let, let's get the word out. I mean, let's, let, let, let's tell sure. people the good news. But there is a way that that, that, that that forces us to sort of scratch an itch that someone has in order to kind of get their attention. And then we begin a relationship on a, on a personal level where we tell people it's really about you. What are your felt needs? What, what, are, what, are the, what are the felt needs that you have? Because we're here to meet them. And I actually don't think that's the call of the church to do that. Uh, needs will be met, but that's not the primary yes. call. I mean, the, the primary yes. call of the, of the church is to reconcile yes. people to God. And, 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 and to one another. And to one another. And so that, when, it depends where we start and how we, we carry that out. Um, and it's a, really a different vision than, than one that says we're, we're community, where we have responsibility to one another, and uh, you are important, but you're important as a part of, yes. of, of the group. You are a people, is what P Peter sa you know, says, that, that you were not a people, now you are a people. Um, that identity of people, we, 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 we need to, to give more emphasis to that, I think, to help us uh, grow in the area of, of holiness. Yes. I think it's, yes. I think it's, it's yes. related. I, I think one of the good things today is, is the, the recovery of the small group. I think that mm -hmm. can go very far in, especially if, uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I'm torn. Um, it's possible for groups to be together so long that they become a clique, and that's dangerous. On the other hand, I'm not really a fan of, of six-week groups. <laughs> I think you've got to be together long enough to know one another and trust one another and be able to open your soul to one another because so much of our, of our church life is play-acting. I'm fine. You're fine. <laughs> Everything's good. See you next Sunday. Uh, to, to really be able to say, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I failed, mm -hmm. I fell. Can you still love me? Can you still help me, accept me? Mm -hmm. And I, so I think there's a fine line between the click group and, and being together long enough to really begin to care for one another and help. 
I, I, and, I, and I think we're growing in that. I mean, I, I, I really sort of like what I see as I look at, especially the, the younger segment of, mm -hmm. of, the, of the Christian church who are, who, who really, is, it, they are very concerned. This group is very concerned with, with outward faith and relating to um, one another, relating to uh, the creation, relating to uh, the culture in ways that are, um, with integrity to to the Christian yeah. walk and to Christian life, and so I'm 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 hopeful, um, and encouraged. Yeah, yeah. I w one of the things that concerns me as I, from my exalted age, look at <laughs> younger people today is, as I listen to Christian music, I I hear people saying over and over again, "I'm a mess, I'm a wreck, I'm broken." Life is horrible, but God loves me, and somehow or other I'm going to make it. And we've lost the optimism, as I said in the lecture, of, uh, or maybe in the question and answer session, of 100 years ago. We don't really believe that the Holy Spirit can transform us ethically to the point where we can live victoriously. Not sinlessly, no, but victoriously. And I, that's, I long to see that happening in the younger generation, that, hey, God is at work in my life. He's changing me. He's making me into his image. Uh, wow. <laughs> when that happens, that's exciting. I was, uh, actually, what you were just saying there addresses a question I was about to raise. Uh, so community has become a more popular buzzword. I think in some sense we sense the absence of it. We sense the isolation, yeah. the fragmentation of the modern world. And so many people are appealing, we need community, we need community. My question then is, um, on the one hand, does holy, the, this notion of holiness as we're developing it make a contribution to that discussion? And similarly, but distinct, differently, uh, what, in what sense does this notion of holiness raise concerns or criticisms of the way community is being talked about in popular discussion? I, I know I'm presenting a new question to you, so. You want to take a couple of minutes to think about it, blindsiding you a bit. Well, I think I think again, uh, the the point that Jay made. Am I in this community to satisfy my needs, or am I in this community for us? I I think mm -hmm. I, I think again this this business of felt needs is. Mm -hmm can be pretty deadly. And it goes back to the garden. <laughs> I mean, hey, I need wisdom, I need beauty, I need good flavor, and obviously all those are in that tree and God doesn't want me to have those. Well, so I guess I'll have to get it myself. <laughs> and all the rest is history. <laughs> so so that, that's one issue, that uh, why am I in this community? Am I in it for myself or am I in it to give? So it's a sort of pseudo community. Yeah. And I think there's a journey we're on with this, too. I mean, I appreciate the, the, the notion of the walk, mm -hmm. the way, because mm -hmm. there's, there's, a, life, there's yes. a life to be lived, yes. and, and, yes. and um, often we're, we're very impatient. About, Instant. I, I can be very impatient about uh, the, the progress that, we, that I seem to be making, that we seem to be making. Um, and so I think there is a journey of discovery where you enter into a relationship, and maybe it's not where you need to be yet. But there are ways in which that can that can grow and that can mature uh, over time. But I think the the, the motivation that one brings yeah. to it, um, why why am I pursuing this? Maybe you start in a place where you say, "Well, I I'm, I joined a group because I really need yeah. I'm really lonely." Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Good. Then how do we turn that then to where that loneliness uh, or isolation then it, it compels us to serve yes. one another? Yes. Yes, uh, in the in the name of Christ and through the power of, of yes. the Spirit. So I think yes. there I think there can be a journey sure. in sure. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, to some degree, uh, Facebook communities and Twitter communities can can foster a superficial idea of belonging that that genuine accountability hmm. has to cut under. Where uh, this is this is not just me sharing my latest uh, girlfriend with my buddies. Uh, this this is about 
uh, what's happening in my life, what's happening in your life, and, and really, really becoming uh, deeply involved, uh, I, I, think, I think that's vital if we are really to begin to disclose some of the deeply hurtful things that are in us, in our ways of relating to others. Uh, for, for, for my brother to be able to say to me, John, do you hear what you just said? What I say. <laughs> and ah, ah. And this is where I think growth in holiness comes in. Yes, we can be fully, deeply surrendered to God. We can be experiencing His Holy Spirit, but there's a whole place in my life that I'm not even aware of that He can't really work on until I come to that awareness. And in community, often is the best place for that kind of awareness. Somebody can say to me, this is really what you're doing here. Oh, wow. I, I agree with that, and, and uh, I think part of what you were getting at is maybe that um, just because a group of people get together does not mean it's that's a community. And there are marks of community, yeah. and you know these they have to do with um, mutual submission, they have to do with honesty, they have to do with um, the love, they have yes. to do with yes. you know the hard you know saying the hard things, but saying the good things, the embrace of uh, coming together, of reconciliation. These are the things that, will, that, that mark Christian community, not simply are we all in the same room <laughs> together physically, yeah. um, but are these other things at work? Yeah. Great. That's, yeah. And then to, let me tease that one more specific part of that question. Uh, so that, that what both of you are saying is really helpful, uh, I think in terms of constructing a, a Christian notion of community and it does very much tie in with your notion of holiness as an ethical communal reality. What difference does the Holy Spirit make to a Christian understanding of community? Well, and I, I, would, I would say this, this, in a sense, what I'm saying, what I believe, comes out of some of my own experience. I think that for so many Christians, we are, we are living in, in really a Galatian heresy. We're really saying, okay, I was saved by faith, I'm a Christian, and now by golly, I gotta live this thing. I'm failing, I can't do it, but I'm, I'm gonna keep trying. And, and I, I really was there. Uh, grew up in a Christian home, uh, had two older sisters, so I didn't have one mother, I had three. Uh, <laughs> I was a good boy, but it was such a burden, such a struggle. And to discover the reality of the Holy Spirit's work in my life, enabling me to do what I wanted to do, but couldn't. That was, that was great good news. And it has been across the years, is that he enables, he is it, is it Augustine who <clears throat> says uh, uh, God provides what he requires? Uh, yes, he calls me to live his life, but then thank God he provides the means by which I may live his life. And that's a joy. So that'd be very similar to the example you gave of loving your wife. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, the illustration of the Holy Spirit is the wind under your wings. Yes, we have to spread our wings. We have to do our part in surrendering, in dealing with issues as they arise, but in the end, mm -hmm. he's the one who lifts us. And that's good news. Yeah, I think the, the, the metaphor of dance can be very helpful here. It wouldn't have been helpful in the, in the situation where I grew up because we didn't <laughs> dance. But, but that, the response... You know, but yeah. yet you're 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 involved in in movement, but in a way it's not you know you're not doing all that movement. Yeah. There's there's relationship yeah. there, and of course it goes beyond that because the power is from another source to do that. I think uh, telling people consistently you can't do this yeah. is really important. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, you know, before don't try you, before this at you, home. Don't, don't even try. <laughs> you, you cannot do this, but here is how we walk with the, with, with the power of the Spirit in our lives. And sometimes that's so mystical. Yeah, yeah. So removed. Yeah, yeah. That people say, I don't, I think maybe that's only for a few people. Yeah. Maybe that's for the quote radical yeah. believer. Mm. Uh, but just me, I, I, you know, I don't know. So are we saying that holiness is the sort of ethical parameters of Christian community and the Holy Spirit is less um, an aspect of that corporateness and more about the personal empowering to fulfill it? Is that what you guys are saying? Or am I not? I, no, I wouldn't be saying that. No, I, it, the, saying the Holy Spirit is the life of the church. Yeah. So what would that look like? How does it change Christian community? I know I'm pushing you guys, so... Yeah. If you don't have answers, kind of just talking here. But. <laughs> well, what I, 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 don't, I don't know what Jay would say, but I, I, think, I think there is an imponderable mm -hmm. in, which, mm -hmm. in which a group of people with, with a sense of belonging to one another are, are saying corporately, what do you want to do in us? and through us. Uh, that, that's not about me spreading my wings on the wind. That's about us. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, I think this is where, and I, and I want to be careful here, but I think that oftentimes the corporate image for the church is a deadly one. That if we just organize, if we just get our manual of leadership styles, if we, if, then, then we can make it work. If, if it works for IBM, if it works for Boeing, it'll work for us. And I think that misses the whole, there is a mystical element. There is this element in which we say, what is the Spirit of God wanting to do in us and for us? It's an organic, this, okay. the place this spirit makes the church much necessarily an organic, uh, mysterious entity that requires a continual responsiveness and engagement. Is that, am I hearing you rightly? Yeah, very definitely. And, and I think, again, it is this, this beautiful mix of corporate and individual. Uh, unless, unless I, as an individual, am open to what he wants to do in my life, there's not a whole lot of point in my talking about what does he want to do in our life. On the other hand, if I am resistant to what he wants to do in my life, I'm going to be a drag on the community. Yeah, I, I, I think the book of Acts is very uh, helpful in this regard because it's kind of a mess. Yeah. If, if you if you read yeah. it and you don't think it's a mess, I, I would say go read it again because <laughs> it's a mess, and yet the the spirit in sort of this new season is is working uh, working out the, the the will of God, the kingdom of God through through the church, yeah. constituting the church, yeah. drawing people, yeah. and and um, and, and that's the, the, the the beauty of it. But there's not there's not a sense in which the people have sort of this handle on it, this, this, you know, we've got a rein, we've got a leash on the Holy Spirit. No, it's, it's how do we follow? How do we, how do we begin to discern? How do we begin to, 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 uh, to hear what the Spirit is saying? And how do we follow that in obedience? And that's why I love Acts 2, 42 and what follows. You know, they, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, to fellowship and prayers. And then the response was the, the Lord added to their number daily those being saved. That's that work of the, of the Spirit mm -hmm. as they were given to one another yeah. in community yeah. following what, yeah. what the Lord was doing. Yeah. And so is that, there is that dance there, but uh, if we think we can nail that down, yeah. um, we will have, it'll be gone. The, the moment will have, will have moved yeah. on. Yeah. I think you've added something important. So we have organic, we have mysterious, you've affirmed that. I think you also just added, though, that it's the church that gathers. I mean, it's the mm -hmm. spirit that gathers. It's mm -hmm. the spirit that holds. Yeah. And it seems to me that that's not, that's not, um, the, it's not really reigns. That's a, that's a profound confidence yeah. that we can yeah. have. Right. Yeah. You know, and so just to, let's, let's play this, if you don't mind, play this out with a couple um, concrete examples. Um, you have a church, I mean, we could, we could start at the church level. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a personal experience. Our church split over, which started over a worship war, ended up being um, a split over uh, differences of um, polity and power. Um, 
to split aside how does our understanding of Christian community and the Spirit's presence and bond, bonding influence in the Spirit, how should the Spirit, our understanding, our confidence in the Spirit in that situation guide the church? So that's the first example. Um, can we talk about Christian community the same way if we get to individual squabbles mm -hmm. within a congregation? Let's say um, two members of the congregation were, were working at a, at a professional level and there was an economic dispute among mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. hard times mm -hmm. um, fits with the First Corinthians 10 mm -hmm. sort of idea and reconciling our differences. And a third level in the congregation, a, a individual couple is going through marital crises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, which isn't strictly an ecclesial relationship, but they are, are. It is to the degree that it's ecclesial community, but it is to the degree that they've surrendered their, their lives to the Lord and they're part of our congregation. Mm -hmm. So there's three different yeah. communal <laughs> issues. How do we think about the place of the Spirit? Speaking of messy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, what, that's why I'm picking those examples, right? So how do, we, how do we think of holiness in those situations? How do we understand the promise of the Holy Spirit in the community in those situations. Yeah, and, and I've had to walk through this, and so, um, and all pastors and, and people who are in churches understand this, and I think, John, some of what you brought forward yesterday in terms of our willingness to surrender, that holiness is that, that part of that was saying, okay, I'll, I don't know all the answers to this, and I don't know where it's taking me, but I'll surrender yes. my will to God, and I can't even do that, but, you know, Holy Spirit helps me to surrender. But you can't walk through these uh, conflicts, corporate conflicts in the church or interpersonal ones, if there is not the willingness to yes. surrender, first of all, and say, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'll surrender. Uh, I'm, I don't feel good about it, or maybe I've got some issues. Yeah. But um, and if we can't start there, then probably you're just going to see fracturing. It's and over. people will leave or people will go. Um, there has to be that willingness to do. That's I think that's the first that's the first step. And so that that as a mark of holiness. Yes. Both personally and yes. in the church to say I, I'm I'm submit I'm submitted to God. I'm mutually submitted to one another. Yes. Um, is so important to 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 healthy life, uh, communal life. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, for me that is the bottom line mm -hmm. of will I surrender my way. That's what destroys churches. I'm gonna have it my way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if you don't agree, well, mm -hmm. that's the end of the story. I, I've often said, churches usually don't split over doctrine. They split over the color of the carpet. <laughs> I'm gonna have it my way. I, I want a red carpet, you want a green one? Uh, and and I, think, I think that, that issue of, of Genuinely, you know, I, I, I was just thinking, you talk about something radical in Romans. Let each of you think of others as better than yourselves. That is radical. Mm -hmm. Maybe his way is better than my way. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's hard for us. Oh, and, my. And, um, <laughs> you know, I think the... Uh, there is a way to maybe come to difference. Sure. It's, it's, so if, if there's a polity difference, uh, there, is a, there is a way to walk that. In fact, there's even a way to walk separation. It might be a holy way to walk mm -hmm. separation. Mm -hmm. with, uh, but it does require us sub surrendering our own thoughts. And the, and the difficulty is my way becomes God's way. Of course. And we kind of take that on. And, and, sure. And, and, and to me, part, you know, part of addressing that is the gifts of discernment that are, that are given to the body that we learn to discern as communities um, rather than just make decisions. Yes. And there's, there's a difference. Isn't think, there? You know, discerning. And, and it's, it's something that in our own congregation we're growing in, but we're, we're needing to grow a lot mm -hmm. in it. But even at our corporate level, our church leadership board, we call it a vestry, um, we're coming to see our role more as discerners. Yes. Yes. Rather than just yes. those who make decisions yes. or come together and you know yes. can we get you know 51 percent of yeah. the vote no it's yeah. how, how do we discern yeah. Yeah. the the mind of christ i think that's a picture of holiness in the, in the body that the great line in acts it seemed good to the holy spirit mm -hmm. and to us, us yeah. mm -hmm. there it is it's not it's not we're just sitting here waiting for a telegram from heaven mm -hmm. but on the other hand as you say it's not a 51 percent vote either
so so we might we might need some real repentance <sighs> um, around er, certain areas of um, where we're willful, <laughs> yeah. where we, you yeah. know, just need to learn to maybe submit to one another and what the what the spirit is saying, yeah. and to tend to discern that yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we have had in our own family a a situation where a marriage has come apart, and uh, uh, a situation where one of the members was simply absolutely unwilling to recognize any fault, the, all the fault was on the other side. And so in the end, in the end, there was no reconciliation possible because unless there is a, a, a real sense of mutuality, we're both responsible in different ways for this problem, it's not going to happen. And uh, that that surrender of my ways is the bottom line. John, thank you again for uh, your lecture yesterday. John, Jay, thank you for this uh, enjoyable and challenging conversation on holiness and uh, church community and the power of the Holy Spirit that, uh, that gives us hope. So thank you.